All right, hey y'all, welcome to part four of today's Country Coffee Chats. Told you guys I was breaking this up because uh, I was told that my coffee chats were getting too long and they were too hard to follow. So here's part four of today's. Not going to go through the whole spiel. Y'all know this is Cheryl Christie Bowman and I. my content is more liberal than most political commentary coming out of Morka and Sand Hill, so don't say one more. So I'm going to talk about Democrats. I said in a coffee chat last week that North Carolina and Moore County Democrats were playing checkers and the Republicans were playing chess, and that's true. And I probably wouldn't have said nothing else about it, but I got very upset last night in a Twitter exchange with whoever it is that runs the Moore Dems Twitter page. I'm suspecting it's 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 the head of the Moore County Democratic Party. Okay. Democrats are outnumbered about two to one in Moore County, and that's true. But just because you're outnumbered don't mean you give up. And somebody made the comment that Everybody needs to start paying attention to what Republicans are doing. And whoever runs that Twitter account, the more Dems Twitter account, came back and said, well, you're late to the party. The time to pay attention was 2022. Uh, tw yeah, 2022, November 2022. So blaming the voters for the lack of success that the Democrats have had in Moore County. I'm sorry. I've said this many times. I I've never been a Democrat. Most of my life, I was a Republican. I switched to independent in 2008 because I got pissed off by the Patriot Act, okay, um, but and public education. But um, one of the reasons I've specifically chosen not to be a Democrat in Moore County is because I always disagreed with the way that they went about things. I, I, they, unorganized, not energetic, not engaging of voters. Um, you know, um, and, and I can personally uh, just talk about, and I'm not going to, but I can talk about several uh, incidents where the Dem the Moore County Democratic Party dropped the ball on, on pretty significant things. Uh, and not only did they not react to things going on in the community, they their actions actually caused more confusion and, and prevented their own members from reacting to things that were going on in the community. The Moore County Democrats can't field candidates for sheriff, DA, County clerk, even. Okay? Board of Commissioners. The last two election cycles, we've had the same. We've had one Democratic uh, person run, same person both times. Zero support from the Moore County Democratic Party. Let me say that again. Zero support from the Moore County uh, Democratic Party. Zero support from the state party. But, of course, the state party has written off Moore County as, as a lost cause, which I think is a mistake, but that that's the way it is. This woman... Running for county commissioner, most people didn't even know who she was. You know, you, you put to share her campaign site on social media, and you get all these messages back to say, "Hey, I, who is this person? I didn't even know she was running." Can't plan events. You know, the last left of center, the only one in recent minute memory demonstration in Moore County that was successful was the March for Choice done by the We Matter group. In, in June, uh, you know, a march for pro-choice where several hundred people, um, you know, uh, came and demonstrated in favor of pro-choice. And I maintain that the reason that thing was successful is because the Moore County Democrats didn't have nothing to do with it. They'd have got involved. That thing probably would have ended up with four or five people standing out there with signs in the rain. There is new leadership coming to the Moore County Democrats. Just like there's new leadership currently in the North Carolina Democrats. But it's going to take more than new leadership to change things. Even nationally, the Democrats are in trouble. Why? We keep talking about how America is getting browner and younger. And yet Republicans continue to win every battle. Why is that? You know, the Democrats are so busy uh, uh, being civil and respect in the process, that they won't even talk about things that need to be talked about, like expanding the Supreme Court, like making Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico states. They won't even talk about it. They won't do anything about it. They're harping constantly about climate change, but their own policies are not really helpful and not doing anything about it. They harp about LBGTQ people, but they're not out there doing anything to prevent harm to these people. You know, they talk about, you know, systemic racism, but they're not, look... This is why y'all keep losing. Not only because you want to be so civil that you, that you refuse to do the job that you were elected to do, but because you're so busy, and I said this the other day, trying to, trying to 
get moderate middle-aged voters like myself on your side, that you are neglecting an entire group of people that outnumber you know, millennials outnumber Generation Xers and Baby Boomers combined. You add the Zoomers to that, there is no reason for the Democrats to ever lose another election. But I'm going to take Moore County specifically, and I'm going to tell you it's a problem all over the nation, in North Carolina and in the nation. The reason that, that, that Democrats keep losing every battle is because young people are not here for your half measures, and your lackadaisical response to the very threats on their lives and livelihoods that they face every day. People who know me personally know I got two kids. One's a 22 year old girl, and one's a 27 year old boy. Okay? And I, I, they're both registered voters and they both vote in every election, but that's because, you know, they were raised in a very politically active uh, household. Their friends don't vote, have no intention of voting, not go support either side. Now, people my age, you know, there's some things about Democrats that I don't like. Things about Democrats that outright, downright scare me. But you know what? They're not coming for, they're not trying to control my body. They're not coming uh, for my personal health care. They're not trying to erase the LBGTQ people that I love in my life from existence in public spaces. So I'm going to vote for the lesser of two evils. But young people don't see things that way. They see no difference between Republicans and Democrats. None. Now, I hear what you're saying. I would argue that there is a difference. One is coming for us. The other is trying to work for us. But the kids are, are, are done with these half measures. And this pat on the back, yeah, yeah, we're going to fight for you. And then you get up in Congress and you don't do squat. Get elected to the North Carolina General Assembly and your butt is absent. Just long enough for the Republicans to be able to override Cooper's veto. I'm tired of y'all. And, and they're not here for your shit. And if you talk to young people about the differences between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, no, they don't see no difference between them. Okay? Oh, yeah, they'll tell you Donald Trump is an asshole and that, you know, Joe Biden's like a friendly grandpa they wouldn't mind having over to dinner, but they don't see any other difference between them. You talk to a young person about Joe Biden, the first thing they're going to do is bring up the 1994 crime bill that put an entire generation of black men in jail for, for doing crack cocaine while giving slaps on the wrist to an entire generation of white males who were doing powder cocaine. Or they're going to talk to you about how Joe Biden was instrumental in getting Anita Hill, uh, excuse me, Clarence Thomas, <laughs> for it slip, Clarence Thomas uh, appointed to the United States Supreme Court. They're going to talk about his years of being more conservative than some of the Republican presidents we've had. And they're going to talk to you about Kamala Harris and about how they don't care what color or sex she is. The fact of the matter is she spent her entire career prosecuting and putting in jail people for smoking a plant. They're not having it. You know, the North Carolina Democratic Party, in its infinite wisdom, decided that Sherry Beasley would be the person that they were going to run against Ted Budd. It had to be Sherry Beasley. Had to, everybody had to jump behind Sherry Beasley to begin with. There's three reasons that they chose her out of the gate. The first reason is because she was highly qualified and a good candidate, and I admit that. The second reason was because she was an African-American female. But the third reason was because they thought she would appeal to moderate voters. Well, she didn't appeal to them enough because she lost. And young people refused to come out and support her. Because they saw her as weak on the issues they care about. Maybe if they'd run Jeff Jackson, we might have Senator Jackson sitting up there instead of Senator Bud. Who knows? We'll never know. Because the North Carolina Democratic Party, the United States Democratic Party, and specifically the Moore County Democratic Party, are so stuck in the past... So busy trying to get moderates to vote for them that they're leaving out on the playing field an entire generation of voters who should be lining up behind them but won't because they won't go far enough. Things that young people care about. 
They do care about their LBGTQ plus family and friends, and they want them to be safe. They do care about systemic racism, okay? They care about all these social issues. They do. But those are not the things that drive them the most. Because no offense to anybody my age or older, my, my son has said this flat to my face. But well, y'all are all going to die soon anyway, and all that stuff will take care of itself. Okay? <laughs> you know? What they are most concerned about are two things. Climate change, which the Democrats, again, talk a good game on, but never do anything about, and economic opportunities and how they don't have any. My son and I talk all the time about when he was born, his father and I went out and bought a pretty decent three-bedroom manufactured home. Okay? Put a couple, a few thousand dollars down as a down payment on it. A few thousand dollars. Were able to get a mortgage for 15 years. $260 a month. That house was paid off when my son was 15 years old. That same house today, that same manufactured house today, that same three-bedroom, 2,400 square foot house today would cost three or four times what we paid for it in 1996. And the mortgage would be 30 years and about $800 a month. And the cost of living has risen over my son's lifetime astronomically. I mean, gas was like a dollar ten a gallon back then. Now look at it, okay? Housing prices, the, the prices of food, the prices of transportation, the prices of an education. But wages have stayed exactly where they were. Exactly where they were. Exactly. So we're asking our children, or demanding that our children and our grandchildren work 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 for minimum wage or barely above that when we know that's not enough for them to ever buy a home ever pay for college without going into significant debt that's what they're worried about and the democrats are just as guilty for the climate here as the republicans and the young people see that and you guys will not address their concerns so they just stay home on election day and you keep getting your asses whooped. I think the people who run the Moore County Democratic Party are good people. I think they're doing the best they can with what they have to work with. But they're old and stuck in their ways like many of us old older people. Okay. We need more than just a change in leadership. We need a change in thinking all the way around. In Moore County specifically, you have Linda Watkins in the Moore County NAACP out there knocking on doors, out there trying to register uh, voters of color, out there trying to register young voters. They're doing it all by themselves. There's a whole group of people in Moore County who are not registered to vote and who have no intention of registering to vote because Democrats, along with Republicans, have taught them that their voices don't matter and that the issues that matter most to them don't matter. You know, the Republicans seized power by aligning themselves with the forest right extremist in their party and those views. Maybe it's time for the Democrats to do the same. Or at least jump off this moderate Harvey horse that keeps you getting you smacked upside the face every time the polls open. Alright, y'all, that's it for part four. Part five is going to be real short, promise. Talk to you all in just a minute.